What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're talking about how to change or how to configure the proxy settings on Google Chrome. And then I'll also talk about a couple other things that I promised I talked about in the previous video. So let's get into it. Uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to go into the settings and I'm going to Google in here or search for uh, proxy. Okay, so search search for proxy, open proxy settings. It's gonna it's gonna spawn a dialog like this. We're gonna go inside the LAN settings, and then in the LAN settings we have this use proxy server. Okay, now I have my proxy running on port eighty eighty one on localhost. So that's from the previous video. If you don't have browser mod proxy, don't worry. Just use the proxy host that you have and the port that you have. Uh, this doesn't have to be the same with me. So I'm going to say localhost port 8081 and click OK. Save. And now this is actually working. Now, if I didn't have certificates installed, which I actually do have my certificates installed, and it's a real pain in the ass to actually install those guys, if I went to a site that was served over HTTPS and not HTTP, which is pretty much like 90% of the sites right now, I think I served over HTTPS, uh, I would not be able to access that site unless I would add it to exceptions. Uh, so to bypass that problem, you need to install a certificate. Now, if you remember in the previous video, we talked about this SSL support directory briefly, right? And inside here we have the certificates. Now you can actually install the certificates to bypass that issue. And the way you install them, oh, actually, let me just show you the ones that I have installed. So if, if whenever you open this, right, when you open this, navigate to this trusted root certificate tab, and then I already installed mine, so I have this two certificates certificates here from Little Proxy, uh, Man in the Middle. Uh, th this are the certificates that come with Browser Mod Proxy. So to install those certificates, you can just click on Import, go to Next, go to Browse, and then install both of them. And the reason this is pain in the ass, and I'm actually not going through like actually installing them is because they take a while to propagate and you have to repeat the procedure <clears throat> sometimes a few a few times like whenever you um, actually import those whenever like if, if I click open and it imports uh, by the way you actually let, let's just do it um, so I can click next uh, place search in the following store just leave it as default accept it uh, import successful. Let's see what happened here. Uh, maybe it'll add it, add it a third one. No, no, it didn't. Okay, so uh, just accept it and then try to load the page. At this point, just go to the page and then try to load it. Uh, go to HTTPS page, uh, not HTTP to to test it. And if it still throws an error saying your connection is not private, you may have to like shut down the browser um, and. Uh, open it up, reopen it, and then check it again. But when you reopen it, make sure that your proxy settings are still set because sometimes proxy settings actually get reset on Google Chrome and it's also a pain in the ass. So double check that and if it doesn't work, you, you may have to try to remove the certificates and then install them again. Now, a uh, warning of advice, uh, or a uh, word of advice, uh, don't keep the certificates running, okay? Remember, this are, uh, where is it? The certificates are no good uh, for general browsing, okay? Uh, they are not, they're not secured. Okay, so please do not keep them after you're done testing, whatever it is that you're testing, remove them from, from your certificates. Okay, for security reasons, do not do not use them. All right, um, so, okay, so we gone through the proxy configuration, we gone through certificates. So now let's take a look at how we can actually enable um, the 
the har file, right? So what is a har file? So whenever we go, like whenever we go to a website, right? And we go to network tab and we load the website. We have this data uh, that is being streamed, right? Um, certain assets that are uh, that we request, like images, uh, JavaScript, uh, CSS, and so on. Uh, all of that takes time, and all of it comes from different sources. So, in the browser, we can just press Control Shift I to get a view like this, right? And every time you go to a new page, we'll we'll have this show. And by looking at this, we can see the timings, we can see the size of the data that, that that's coming back, where it's coming back from. Uh, we can also look at cookies in here as well, and some other stuff. Now with uh, programmatically, uh, with WebDriver, we're not able to see this data. So a HAR file would be very helpful uh, in in that case. And basically, HAR file will show this uh, this info outside of the browser. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at how to get right now um, with the standalone uh, server. So first thing, we need to enable uh, the har file and okay where am I getting this from um, so if you go to browser mod proxy github page they have this documentation right and over here they have a bunch of different um, requests that you can actually fire against their rest server and this is the rest server that, that that's running for uh, browser mod proxy uh, so one of the one of the requests that we have already filed uh, fired is this post request right to to start the proxy server. Uh, so in a similar manner, we can actually do a put request against proxy and then the proxy port that we started and then what exactly uh, we want to to do right. So in the, in, in this case, we want to put a har file uh, or put the capturing for a, a har file. So what we're going to do is we're going to call curl and we're doing a put request, curl minus x put, and then we're doing that against the same uh, localhost server on port 8080 uh, proxy, and then the proxy that we're using, which is running on 8081, and then what we need is the har file. So now that we have this har file, <clears throat> we can actually curl for let me just go back up here so instead of firing a put I'm firing a get okay on the same URL and now I can actually see the data uh, that is being logged so now if I go onto this well actually I'm gonna go to, to a different page uh, let me go to browser mod proxy here and then if I do a get again well, this one for some reason didn't actually capture it. Let me try to reload the page. I do get again on on the har file. You see that it's growing now. So there is more information that's being captured. Like any page I'm visiting at this point, right? If I keep refreshing this guy, um, any page I'm visiting is getting captured in this output. And I can later on, I can actually go through this logs and see uh, like who who tried to access which services uh, through this proxy. So that's that. Now you can do another cool thing with um, with browser mod uh, proxy, and that's it. if you if you if you are hacking or if you're into hacking, you're probably gonna uh, like this one. So if we go back over here. Uh, they're talking about uh, making changes to the DNS, right? Uh, this guy. So you can actually remap the DNS to return uh, different data. So for example, here they give an example. You can remap example.com to point to a different IP, right? Meaning <clears throat> this is good for phishing, right? So you can say anyone who's connecting to uh, to the internet through your proxy you can actually change the DNS uh, to instead of whenever they go to Facebook maybe you want to redirect them to your Facebook so this is how you would do it you would 
you know you have your website out there that that's running on IP uh, let's just hypothetically say it's running on IP 1.2.3.4 so you can say and that's that's your phishing website for Facebook and then you you want to redirect whoever is trying to access Facebook from your network to your phishing website that's how you would do it so let's take a look at how the request would actually look to do that and we'll do example.com and before we uh, actually make changes to the DNS let's go to example.com and see what happens so right now when I go to example.com I actually go to example.com this is the data that's getting returned by that domain okay and this is a live website now when I make a change <clears throat> and this change might take a while to propagate actually uh, but when I make a change uh, with Coral uh, it'll actually send it well we'll send it I guess to oh, let me do it this way uh, so example dot com I want that to redirect to 0, .0, .0, .0 and because this is inside quotes we need to escape this guy uh, to make sure it's a valid JSON and then we also need to tell curl that this is content type application JSON okay and we're making a post request Again, we're making that post request to our uh, server on local host 8080. And this is for proxy, and the proxy that we're running is 8081. And this is for hosts, right? Again, all of this information I'm getting from their documentation over here, uh, which they provide, right? They provide the uh, the endpoint that I need to hit and they provide the payload that I need to uh, set and then I'm just using Coral to do that so now we fire that and it may take a while to propagate but essentially when I go to example.com it should redirect me to 0, 0.0.0 .0. okay so when I go to example.com technically I should see the same output let's see if I refresh this <clears throat> Okay, let it give it some time to propagate, but once it propagates, it should send me a redirect. Not redirect because the domain is going to stay the same. This The, the domain is going to stay the same as the, the data that is being served is going to change. I may just have to f kind of pause the video and then resume it if this takes too long okay there we go so now it propagated now if I well for some reason when I refresh this it still serves the same thing because it's cached I think it's cached. All right, but if I if I actually do it from uh, from incognito, if I go to example.com from incognito, you can see it's serving the data from from my local host. All right, so those are some of the tricks that you can do with Browser Mod Proxy. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure to like the video, subscribe, and share if you learned something new. Also, uh, I am running a poll right now on the community tab on the channel. Uh, you can tell me which videos you guys want to see next for WebDriver or any other videos. Uh, just, just leave your comments, tag me in your comments so I see them, or you can just vote on that poll in the community tab. Uh, also, guys, if you like this channel and it, it helps you out, maybe it helped you out professionally or in any other way you guys can support this channel through patreon or through paypal uh, donations or you can just share um, this content of this channel on your social media it helps out a lot as always guys thank you for watching and have a good one take care